day, and welcome to St. Mary's Church in Shine in Barnesville, Maryland, for the 27th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Our opening hymn is Peer at This Table. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. As we come into God's presence, let us call to mind our sinfulness. Lord Jesus, you are the Lord of the harvest. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you are sure the way that leads to peace. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the tireless servant of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
Almighty ever living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpassed the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Let me now sing of my friend, my friend's song concerning his vineyard. My friend had a vineyard on a fertile hillside. He spaded it, cleared it of stones, and planted the choicest vines. Within it, he built a watchtower, and he hewed out a wine press. Then he looked for the crop of grapes, but what it yielded was wild grapes. Now, inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah, Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard than I had not done? Why, when I looked for a crop of grapes, did it bring forth wild grapes? Now, I will let you know what I mean to do with my vineyard. Take away its hedge. Give it to grazing. Break through its wall. Let it be trampled. Yes, I will make it a ruin. It shall not be pruned or hoed, but overgrown with thorns and briars. I will command the clouds not to send rain upon it. The vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his cherished plant. He looked for judgment, but saw bloodshed, for justice, but hark the outcry. The word of the Lord. Take care of 
this vine and protect what your right hand has planted. The Son of Man whom you yourself made strong. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. The vineyard of the Lord is the house of Israel. Reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, have no anxiety at all, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. Then the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence, and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing what you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. Then the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. So bring the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, Hear another parable. There was a landowner who planted a vineyard, put a hedge around it, dug a wine press in it, and built a tower. Then he leased it to tenants and went on a journey. When vintage time drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to obtain his produce. But the tenants seized the servants, one they beat, another they killed, and a third they stoned. Again he sent other servants, more numerous than the first ones, but they treated them in the same way. Finally he sent his son to them, thinking, they'll respect my son. When the tenants saw the son, they said to one another, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and acquire his inheritance. They seized him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. What will the owner of the vineyard do to those servants when he comes? They answered him, He will put those wretched people to a wretched death and lease his vineyard to other tenants who will give him the produce at the proper time. Jesus said to them, Did you never read in the scriptures the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? By the Lord has this been done? It is wonderful in our eyes. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce rich fruit. The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Indeed, all three of our scriptures today have to do with <clears throat> the vineyard, God's vineyard, as it was in the time of the Israelites, in our time of Jesus, and you know the method in which the vineyard would grow or survive or produce or not produce. In the Old Testament, you know, Isaiah <clears throat> saying to the people of Israel, you know, they become wild and out of control. And so they're producing only the wild grapes after <clears throat> the Father has planted the vineyard and protected them and guarded them and put in the good soil and nurtured them. You know, they have turned their back. And so he promises, you know, this will be the end of this sort. You know, I will knock down the, their protections. I will take away their healthy soil. <clears throat> and I will leave them to be overgrown with weeds and to be desolate with no rain to water themselves. <clears throat> He's doing that because the house of Israel has been unfaithful, you know, and not caring. Jesus goes back to the idea of the vineyard, but in this case, you know, the house of Israel takes it over, you know, wants to control it, doesn't want to follow God's ways or God's promise. And so the servants, the prophets are beaten, killed, and ultimately the son, Jesus, comes, and him they seized and killed, hanging him from a tree. You know, the vineyard, we are all part of God's vineyard, you know, wherever we find ourselves in life, in the moment of our baptism, you know, we are called to be nourished and to grow and to bear fruit, fruit that will last, fruit that will nourish people, fruit that will draw people to a sense of faith. <clears throat> Jesus and God never said, you know, there won't be difficult times, there won't be weeds in your garden, there won't be things in your way, but you have to remember that it is God's garden that you tend and you are his vines and you are being the fruit that is produced. And that fruit is to, you know, make choice wine. So as we gather around God's table, we celebrate this Eucharist. Let us continue to pray that we do bear fruit, even in these difficult days, that we don't give in to weakness or temptation or frustration, but that we look forward to the kingdom of God and we produce the fruit that God desires. For the church, that we may produce fruit for the kingdom of God through acts of love, humility, and compassion, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those living in regions of the world marked by ongoing hostilities and resentments, that they may find in their hearts a way to reconciliation, acceptance, and peace, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we may foster and encourage a true and lasting respect for all human life, we pray. Lord, for those who harvest in fields and on farms, in orchards and vineyards, that they may be paid a just wage and treated humanely, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are responsible for the future of our country, our environment, and our safety, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and the dying, especially all on our prayer list and those suffering from COVID-19 and Mel Washington, for those who have died. 
we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, you have entrusted us with this fruitful planet, and your grace to continue the task of building up your kingdom. Provide us with the tools we need to make this world wonderful in your eyes. We ask this through Christ's God. Amen. Bless you, Lord God of all creation, dear goodness, may these gifts of bread and wine go out more truly divine, working in man, and then become our spiritual food and drink. Blessing God's grace. Lord, wash in the clean, cleanse me from my sin. So pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of Except, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which you celebrate with dutiful service, voraciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us through Christ, thou. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. <clears throat> Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, who you laid the foundation of the world and have arranged the changing of times and seasons, you formed us in your own image and set us over the whole world in all its wonder, to rule in your name over all you have made and forever praise you in your mighty works, in Jesus the Christ. And so with all the angels we praise you as a joyful celebration we proclaim. <laughs> So they become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus. In the time of betraying and willingly to his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this for all you do this. For this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, in supper with them, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which we put out to you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Giving thanks, you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring in the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Wilton, our Bishop, and all your holy people. Remember all of our family and friends who have died. Bring them home via peace and the life 
light of your face. And have mercy on Mel Washington, all the living Lord. We pray that the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, and Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and all the apostles and saints that please you throughout the ages. May merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. It is through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, and the of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Pray now as Jesus commands us. Our Father. Lord, we pray for every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy may be free from sin and safe from distress as we wait the blessed hope from the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are the Lord's now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. May God on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you all. And takes away the sins of the world, blessed as we call it the supper of the Lamb. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is the Canticle of the Son, verses 1 and 5. Oh.